I am so ecstatic right now. I got my Fort and Cali number 33. It's a little bit of backstory. I went to Nam and I went to the Fort and booth and I sat down and tried this new white head that they had there. I plugged in and I just started chugging and everything felt so great, so heavy, so cutting. It was one of the best guitar tones I've ever heard in my life. And I asked him, you know, the grind on in this or is it the new blade pedal? And they said, no, you're just going straight into the amp. I couldn't believe it. And at the time I was using uh, the then unreleased Solar G series, actually a red one just like this. And I really like that guitar and both the guitar and the amp have kind of been haunting me ever since. And I've been dying to get both of them, and now I have both of them. Uh, I missed the first run of the Cali. I was devastated. I was afraid they weren't going to do another run, and I had missed out on something. Uh, they announced they were doing a second run. I was like, that's it. I'm selling my Kemper. I'm selling my PB. I'm picking one up, and I did. Three months later, it's finally here, and I am in love. The first, we're going to hear this in a mix. It's going to be an overdrive channel one. which is just going to be this guitar straight in, no overdrive or boosts or anything. And then afterwards, we're going to run through all the channels and features on the amplifier. So first, let's take a look at the clean channel. The clean channel shares a global EQ with the other two overdrive channels, but it has its own master output with the concentric pot on the master, and it has its own input gain. It also has its own dedicated bright switch. So let's hear how it sounds. We're going to run through the different bright switch settings, and then I'm going to add some effects to it. And then at the end, this channel really sounds good with a booster overdrive in front of it. It gets some good bluesy tones. So we're going to hear how that sounds as well. Thank you. 
right? So overdrive channel one is the much more tight, kind of aggressive in your face channel because it has a hardwired bright pot. That makes it brighter. It makes it have more mid-range, upper mid-range cut, and definitely a lot more high-end presence. The way that the gain channels works is you have gain one, which is two concentric pots that control the input gain of the guitar, how hard the guitar hits the amplifier. I like it. The sweet spot for me is just past noon, where you're hitting it just a little bit harder to get some more saturation and aggression, but not so much that you're oversaturating or hitting the amp too hard. Then gain two for both of them with concentric pots is going to be the overall gain saturation. The black pots are going to be overdrive one, and the inner silver concentric pots are going to be overdrive two. <laughs> you through what some of the features in this sound like the bright switch for this it acts kind of like a normal bright switch you'd expect on an amp it does make it brighter but it actually adds more high-end saturation and you'll notice when i flip around how much gain i have changes and when it's off completely we lose a lot of gain <laughs> Both overdrive channels have a violent switch, and the violent switch adds a fourth preamp tube, and that fourth preamp tube adds more gain saturation and more distortion. I had both of them on for this demo, for both channels, for the in-mix. I much prefer it. It sounds a little weak and thin without it, I feel like. There are things you could do where you could pump the channel gain, and I feel like because it's definitely a lot cleaner, it would be great for something like eight string work, uh, more gent kind of stuff, more extended range kind of stuff where you don't want that saturation, especially on the low end. But for this kind of stuff, and for me, I much prefer the violent switch. The thump and hair controls are essentially low end and high end kind of saturation. They allow you to dial the amp in with any cabinet that you have. That way you can get the right low end response and kind of high end harmonic distortion. There's also this cool saturation mod that's on a push pull on the bass. It adds more uh, gain saturation as you'd expect, but also more compression. I don't personally dig it because it gets a bit fizzy and I don't like the compression that much. I feel like it kind of takes something away from the tone. But again, for somebody that's maybe doing more gent, more low end stuff, and they just need a hair more compression and maybe a little bit more saturation, I think that would be perfect. Thank you. 
Now, overdrive channel two is a darker channel because it doesn't have the hardwired pot. Because it's a bit darker and maybe even a bit flubbier sounding because of that and a little less aggressive, I find this channel is perfect to hit with an overdrive or boost. I really prefer this channel for extended range because I can use my Fortin 33 to hit it, cleans up that low end, adds that upper mid cut and spike that I really wouldn't get on an overdrive one with no boost with a drop A or lower guitar. So I'm going to run you through the same features I ran through on Overdrive 1 for the most part, and we're going to hear how this channel sounds in comparison, and then I'm going to add an Overdrive to it so you can hear how that cleans everything up and adds that cut to it.